If you are a grandparent who is raising your grandchildren, listen up. This video is for you. My name is Laura Hurd, and I'm an attorney who's been practicing family law in San Antonio, Texas since 1987. And I've had numerous cases over the years where grandparents have come to me concerned about the situation where their own child is not a good parent and they have been raising their grandchild. And oftentimes they have been to other attorneys who've told them grandparents have no rights in Texas because the law is that all parents are assumed to be fit parents and parents have the right to raise their own children however they see fit even to the exclusion of the grandparents grandparents don't have the right to step in the place of a parent unless the parents rights have been terminated and so oftentimes if a parent's in jail or is just abandoning the child and the grandparent wants to step in, they, they come to an attorney seeking to have rights to visit or to have custody of the child. And they find that the only way they could get those rights would be to actually terminate the rights of their own child, to declare that their own child is an unfit parent, which oftentimes they're not willing to do. Of course, you know, if you try that and you fail, you have destroyed the relationship with your child and they're certainly not going to let the grandparent have the child, the grandchild after the grandparent has attempted to terminate the parental rights of that parent. But oftentimes the grandparents who sit down with me and explain their whole situation, we're able to find a workaround or we're able to find some other remedy for them. It may take quite a long time. And it's just a very specific situation that you have to look at the specific facts of that particular situation to see what might be done to assist them. It's not something where you can just say, as a general rule, all grandparents can do this if they have had custody of their grandchild for a period of time. There are too many other factors to consider and every situation is unique. But don't give up hope until you've actually talked to an attorney. If grandparents come to me and they say their daughter was a drug addict and she had lived with the parents and the grandchild, the daughter, had lived in the home of the grandparents for a period of time. And then the daughter moved out and left the grandchild there. What we need to do is look at how long that grandchild has been in the sole custody and control of the grandparents. The time when the daughter lived in the house with the child and the grandparents doesn't count because that child was still technically under the control of the mother. But when the mother let, moved out and left the grandchild there, then we could start counting the time that the the child was in the sole custody and control of the grandparents. Oftentimes in a situation like this, there'll be periods where mother will come and get the child for a few weeks and then she'll bring the child back and be gone for a few months. And we have to document and have proof of exactly how long that child was with the grandparents under their sole exclusive custody and control. And we can sometimes add periods together, even though there's a gap in the periods, but it's all a matter of proof. We have to be able to prove it. And that is in order to have what we call standing. You can't even come into court unless you have standing. And so a lot of times the grandparents can't even file suit because they haven't had the child long enough in their exclusive custody and control. But sometimes they have. And so when we look at what kind of proof do we have, and what kind of a time period do we have, do we have the ability to even file suit? Sometimes we can file suit for the grandparents to take over custody of their grandchild. Oftentimes, if the parent who is the child of the grandparents is a drug addict or has a very unstable lifestyle, they find it difficult to meet the requirements that the court might put on them at that point. The judge may require drug testing. Drug the judge may require supervised visitation. So if they find that that parent can't even meet those minimal requirements 
because of their addiction, then it may be that the grandparents are able to take over custody of the child. But also keep in mind that every child has two biological parents and the other biological parent also has to be served with notice and the opportunity to appear and take over the parenting duties. A lot of times father has been totally out of the picture or we never even knew who the father was. And so that's a whole nother issue in the lawsuit because we can't just shrug our shoulders and say, we don't know who the father is. We have to make a diligent search for that father. And if we find him, serve him with notice. And sometimes the father will step in and say, I want custody of my child. And they have a superior right to the grandparents, even though they have been totally out of the picture. And so we have to prove that they intentionally abandoned that child for a long enough period of time. Again, the amount of time matters. Has it been a short period of time because the child hasn't been alive that long, if the child's very young, or has it been a really long period of time? And did that father even know that the child existed for that long period of time? And so there's lots of facts to consider. And I've had situations where the father did step in and turns out he was a decent father and was able to work out a custody arrangement with the grandparents where the grandparents had visitation rights, but the father had primary custody and the mother who was a drug addict just had very limited visitation rights. And so that is one scenario that worked out. There have been other scenarios where the grandparents were eventually able to get primary custody, but both parents still had visitation rights. And so we had to juggle the visitation rights of the mother, the visitation rights of the father, and the primary custody of the grandparent. And so they can co-parent together. There's lots of factors to consider when you've got this kind of a family dynamic. And so it's important to talk with an attorney who has experience in these kinds of situations, who can talk about all the possibilities.